Hi, welcome back. So today we're going to go over some exercises about unit vectors. Now, if you haven't done these exercises yet, I suggest you pause the video here, go check the description. There's a link there to a website with a PDF on it. You can download the PDF and you can try these exercises yourself first. And then after you've done that, come back and we'll go over the solutions. All right, so let's continue here. Uh, question one says, uh, for the diagram to the right, we want to write each vector in terms of i hat and j hat. Okay, so let's get started here. We have two vectors, a and y. So we're going to write a in terms of i hat and j hat. So that means we have to break it down into x and y components. Okay, so. What I want to do is I want to write the X component first, and then I'm going to write down the Y component. So the X component, if we remember our formulas, is going to be A cosine of theta, while the Y component is A uh, sine of theta. Now, why is this? Let's just quickly review. It's because this angle, theta, gives us an, a Y component and an X component like this, right? And we know that cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? So that's going to be equal to this a sub x over the hypotenuse here, which is a. Okay, and so then when we solve for ax, that equals a cosine theta which is what we've got here. And the same logic will go for sine. When you're solving for sine of theta, you get the opposite side, which is going to be your y component there. Okay, so that uh, that's the logic really quickly. Reviewed, and uh, let's just plug in some numbers here, okay? So this is going to be 2.0 meters times cosine of 45 degrees. And uh, a sub y is also going to be 2.0 meters times the sine of 45 degrees. Now, if you remember cosine and sine, uh, 45 degrees, they're both going to be the same, which makes sense because this is halfway, so you expect the x component and the y component to be equal in size, um, which we will see when we calculate it. So if we have a 45 degree angle, we can take the cosine of that and then multiply this by two meters and we'll get 1.4 meters. And just to verify, we get the same answer. If we take the sine of this, you can see we're going to get the same exact answer of 1.4 meters. Okay, so that means if we wanna write this down as a vector, it means that the vector a is equal to 1.4 meters times the i hat direction plus 1.4 meters times the j hat direction and so this is going to be the vector written down in terms of i hat and j hat so this is an actual vector now let's do the same thing for uh b right so vector b we're going to have the x and y components for each and i'm just gonna uh, fast forward a little bit uh, first thing we need to know is what is theta so theta in this case um, is going to be the angle from the positive x-axis all the way to this vector b and so this theta we see is going to be equal to 180 plus 20 degrees that's 200 degrees okay so we want to have this be 3.5 meters times the cosine of 200 degrees and uh, b sub y is going to be 3.5 meters times sine of 200 degrees and then we can just uh compute this real fast so 200 degrees times uh sorry not times cosine of that uh, times 3.5 is going to be negative 3.3 meters, okay? So that's the x component. And for the y component, it's going to be, again, 200 degrees. We're going to take the sine of that and multiply that by the magnitude of b, which is 3.5 meters, and we get negative 1.2 meters. And so we can write down the vector b as being equal to 
negative 3.3 meters in the i hat direction minus 1.2 meters in the j hat direction and there we go we've written down the vector b in i hat and j hat format okay let's look at part b here we want to use unit vectors to express c where c is equal to 2a minus 3b so let's uh let's do that uh, so we want to find uh, 2 times a and minus 3 times b. So uh, we can say that c is going to be equal to uh, 2 times a, 2 times 1.4 meters in the i hat direction plus 1.4 meters in the j hat direction so this is a right minus three times b and b is negative 3.3 meters in the i hat direction minus 1.2 meters in the j hat direction so we've done it. we've written out the both of the vectors expanded them out and now we actually have to do a little bit of math okay so this is equal to uh two that's going to be 2.8 meters in the i hat direction plus 2.8 meters in the j hat direction uh, and then we're going to get some negative times negative so here we go to what is this 9.9 .9 meters in the i hat direction plus what's this one uh, sorry 3.6 meters in the j hat direction and now we can combine things together a little bit combine the i hats combine the j hats so we're going to get uh 2.8 meters plus 9.9 .9 meters in the i hat direction and that's going to be plus 2.8 meters plus 3.6 meters in the j hat direction and now finally let's do this uh, remaining math here so we had 2.8 plus 9.9 .9, and that's 12.7 meters in the I hat direction plus 2.8 plus 3.6 that's going to be 6.4 meters in the J hat direction so this is C right there All right this is the actual vector of C written out in I hat and J hat format finally we want to find the magnitude and direction of C so this is going to require us to use uh, the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude, right? So the magnitude of C is going to be equal to uh, 12.7 meters squared plus 6.4 meters squared. And then we take the square root of all of that, right? Using the Pythagorean theorem. So let's do that real quick. Uh, 6.4 squared. And then we also want a 12.7 squared. We add these together. That's our total there. We take the square root and that's gonna be 14.2 meters. So this is going to be the actual length, total magnitude of this vector C. And finally, we want the direction. So the direction is going to be, if you remember the formula, it's going to be the inverse tangent of c sub y over c sub x okay and so this is again I want to rederive this real quick right you have this uh you have some angle theta here right this is uh let's call this vector c so here is c sub y and here is c sub x right so the theta we see that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent Right, and so solving for theta is going to give us the inverse tangent of c sub y over c sub x. And so that's where this formula comes from really quickly. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's just do this here. It's going to be the inverse tangent of c sub y is 6.4 meters and c sub x is 12.7 meters. So our calculator will come in handy here. We've got 6.4 divided by 12.7 gives us a number and we'll take the inverse tangent of it to give us an angle of about 27 degrees. So this then becomes 
the direction of C. And so we've done it. We've solved everything that we needed to do here. Let's look at question number two. All right, question number two involves two uh, three-dimensional vectors. And so I'm not going to bother sketching this. Sketching things in 3D is a little bit annoying, but we have to find the magnitude of A plus B. Okay, so we're just going to add them together here. So uh, we can imagine that uh, we want to find what A plus B is. Find out uh, what this resultant vector looks like in IJK unit vector form. So uh, let's, uh, let's write this down as um, 4i hat plus 3j hat plus 2k hat plus 2i hat minus 2j hat plus 1 k hat, okay? And so when we write it down this way, it's a little bit easier to see what the resultant is going to be. We add these two together, we're gonna to get uh, four plus six is six, uh, four plus two is six i hat. Uh, three minus two is going to be plus one j hat. And two plus one is gonna be plus three k hat. And so this is what the sum of these two vectors equals. These two three dimensional vectors added together gives us this result in. And now to find the magnitude, again, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, but we're going to use the three-dimensional version of it, okay? So in this case, in the three-dimensional version, the idea is that uh, a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals d squared, right? So this is the extended three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to use that, and we're going to say that the magnitude of a plus b then must be equal to uh, a squared, which is 6 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared, and then we take the square root of all of that. Okay, so 6 squared is going to be 36 plus 1 plus 9 and there we go, 46, take the square root, and that's going to give us about 6.8 for our final magnitude of this uh, resultant vector of A plus B. Uh, so that's how we do that. And we're going to do the same thing here for part B, but there's a little bit of scalar multiplication involved. Okay, so... Okay, so now we want to solve for part B here, and we're going to find the magnitude of 4a minus b. Okay, so let's do that, and we'll do it pretty much the same way we did part A there. So we're going to have 4 times a, which is going to be 4i hat plus 3j hat plus 2k hat, and then we're going to subtract... 1 times b hat, uh, vector b, which is going to be 2i hat minus 2j hat plus 1k hat. Okay, so let's uh, now distribute in the 4 and the negative 1. So we're going to uh, write this down now as 16i hat plus 12j hat plus 8k hat. And then we're going to here get a negative 2i hat, a plus 2j hat, and a negative 1k hat. And so now we can just sum all of this up. So to do that, we're going to get now 14i hat plus 14j hat uh, plus 7k hat. And so now this represents what 4a minus b is equal to. It's 14i hat plus 14j hat plus 7k hat. Okay, so we're very close to finding now we need the, the actual magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude of 4a minus b, we're going to be using a Pythagorean theorem again. So this is going to be 14 squared plus 14 squared plus 7 squared, and then we take the square root of all of that. So let's use our handy calculator here. It's going to be 14 squared. So that's 196, and we're going to get another 196 when we do the next 14 squared, and then 7 squared is going to be 
49. So that gives us a total here of 441. Take the square root, and this is equal to 21. So this is the actual magnitude of 4a minus b. Okay, well, that's going to do it for the exercises today. I hope that helped. Uh, if it did, um, give, me a, give me a like, give me a sub. That really helps me out a lot. And if you still have questions about how we did these things, or maybe you didn't quite understand something, let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you. Come back for our next lesson, where we're actually going to further develop uh, vectors and look at vector multiplication and what that actually means. So uh, look forward to it, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.